Hey guys, it's Mr. Kilburn, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time here going through something called the squeeze theorem. And the squeeze theorem is going to allow us to prove that, in fact, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x equals 1. Okay, so that's our goal. We don't do a lot of proofs um, in calculus, actually go through them step by step. But it's kind of a cool proof, um, kind of straightforward proof. It's got a great name, so that's why we're doing it. Okay, so let's start here. Let's start with um, creating some triangles. Okay, so just to give you a little heads up here, this this um, proof is geometric in nature. Okay, so we're going to show some things geometrically and and um, without a whole lot of work, we'll prove what we in fact need to prove. Okay. So, hang on here, this needs to be a little bit, there we go, that's better. Okay, okay, so I'm going to create three different triangles and talk about the area of those triangles and how they relate to one another. So there's the largest triangle we're going to use. Um, the next triangle, let's see here, we'll do this, right there, and we'll go that, all right. Okay, so the first triangle. Okay, the first triangle is going to be this triangle right in here, like so. So we're going to call that the small triangle. And the area of that small triangle is simply the common formula you remember, one half base times height. All right, so one half, the base is one, this is a unit circle. The question is, what's the height? Well, this height right here, the coordinates of that point are cosine x and sine of x. Uh, with x being our essential angle right there, okay? So the height of that triangle is simply the sine x, um, the value of sine of x, whatever that is, whatever it happens to be. Okay, so the height is simply sine of x, okay, which gives us an area of sine x over 2, okay? All right, so what about the medium triangle? Well, the medium triangle is this sector triangle, but it includes this shaded area right here. Right here, okay? So there's that actual portion that it's included with, and I will, okay, here, and here, and here. Okay, so it's that red pie-shaped um, sector area. Okay, no, that's a little different. Okay, so the medium triangle, if you remember sector area triangles, the, um, the formula for the area of those is the central angle times the radius squared all over two. But we're dealing with a circle here and we're dealing with radians, so it's gonna be not over just two, but two pi, okay? So the question is, how does this pi piece compare to the area of the whole circle, which is pi r squared, okay? Well, the pi's would cancel. Uh, the radius is 1, so 1 squared, that just kind of causes those to become 1, in essence, kills them out. And we're left with an area of simply x over 2. So that's the medium triangle. The large triangle, okay, is the blue triangle right here. Okay, so the question is, what's the area of that? Well, we're back to 1 half base times height. Okay, the base, again, is 1. That's the, it's the again, it's the unit circle. So the question is, what's the height? Well, we need to use one of our trig ratios, keeping in mind that we're standing here on angle X, right? Well, what side is this compared to angle X? It's the opposite. And I already know this side, uh, because it's a unit circle, it's one. So let's use tan, okay? Um, this would be the opposite, and this would be the adjacent. But again, the adjacent, that side's just one. So it's really the height of that um, triangle, which is what I want to deal with, gives this an, a coordinate point of um, 1 comma tan of x, okay? So we're just going to call that height, which is opposite over adjacent again, but the, the um, adjacent is just 1, okay? So we can call that tan of x. All right, I simplify that, and I get tan of x all over 2. Okay, so even though there's a whole other rigorous aspect we could spend with this is proving that one is bigger than the other, just by visual observation, in this case, we're just going to do that. It's a little, little cheating, but we're okay. 
Okay, so the smallest triangle is clearly smaller than the triangle, sector triangle that includes this shaded area right here, which is clearly smaller than this larger blue triangle right here, right? So we're going to state, kind of the obvious, but whatever. Okay, we're going to say that the, um, the area of the small triangle, which is sine of x over 2, is less than or equal to the medium triangle, which is x over 2, which is less than or equal to the area of the larger triangle, which is tan of x all over 2. Okay, now it's a matter of simplifying. I could multiply everything by 2, and now I'm at sine of x is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to tan of x. All right, now I want to somehow in my inequality here get something that looks like this. And right now I don't really have that, okay? So uh, just some basic algebraic manipulations. I could multiply everything by 1 over sine of x, okay? And here's why. When I do that, these signs would cancel, right? And I get uh, 1 is less than or equal to x over sine of x, which is less than or equal to tan of x over sine of x. All right. Now, I've got x over sine of x, which is clearly not the same as um, sine x over x. So now what? Well, um, at this point, I could multiply by, um, well, even before that, let's do this. 1 is less than or equal to x over sine of x, which is less than or equal to, let's get rid of that tan now, cosine of x all over sine of x, all right? Over here, just on this one um, term over here, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 1 over sine of x. 1 over sine of x. x over sine of x. Okay, why did I do that? Well, here the signs cancel, and here the signs cancel, and I'm left with 1 over cosine x. Okay, well, I still don't have my sine of x over x. I need that. So what I'm going to do is simply reverse the order of my inequalities by flipping that middle, um, that middle term. Okay, so now I'm going to have one is greater than or equal to sine of x over x, which is greater than or equal to cosine x. Okay, it's kind of like if you had two thirds is less than seven eighths. If I flip the two thirds, okay, now I get to say that three halves is greater than eight sevenths, which it is. So it's kind of a lame little explanation, but hopefully that, if there's a little bit of confusion there, hopefully that cleared it up. Okay, so now um, I've got an expression that I want, and I've got, a, even, I even have a one here, that's kind of cool. So how does this tie into the squeeze theorem? Well, let's take a second here and show, make some more space. <coughs> um, let's show, first of all, the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 is 1, which it is, right? It's just, it's a constant, that's the limit, all right? Well, what's the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of x, all right? Well, as I'm getting closer, whether I'm, whether I'm coming from the left or the right, or clockwise or counterclockwise, as x gets closer and closer to 0, well, that's kind of cool, as x gets closer and closer to 0, um, I'm getting closer and closer to 1, right? So the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of x is also 1. Well, look what we just showed. The limit of 1 is 1. The limit of cosine of x is 1. And this, this sine of x over x, which is what we're trying to prove, it's in between those two. Well, the only way that's possible is that the limit of the sine of x over x is also, in fact, equal to 1. Oh, not that. I'll just do this. Right there. Okay, so we just proved it. All right, guys, there you go. Hope that helped. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Take care. Talk to you soon.